do we always have to Christianize everything in Africa? Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Lily Motams. For those of you who've just stumbled on this video for the first time, because you've never come across my videos, I am Lily Motams, and this is my YouTube channel. If you haven't yet subscribed, this is just a quick reminder to ask you to please subscribe so that you can get notifications each time I upload videos. Today is a very sensitive topic. This vlog is very sensitive in that I will be discussing a very sensitive topic. I'll start by my Facebook post. A few days ago, I posted on Facebook about a matter that has been to my heart. Basically, we have a Zambian celebrity who was accused a few years ago for child defilement. So basically he was accused for sexual violence. And a few days ago, I saw him on Facebook being celebrated. This is the image, I'm sure you see, as you can see, that's his image. He had been awarded a certificate for attending a workshop. The workshop was about women, caring for women, and I think domestic violence is one of the topics that they tackled and other forms of violence. So when I first saw that post on one of the celebrities in Zambia posting, sharing the guy's images, as you can see, I was, I was quite resented. I wasn't really excited about the whole idea because I just felt that this person has been in the media for some scandalous event, events. He was even in prison and convicted, if not for the president of Zambia. For those of you who are not Zambians, I'll just say briefly about him. So he was convicted a few years ago in Zambia for apparently, he was allegedly, people will say allegedly, um, found in a sexual relationship with a 14 year old girl. He went to prison for it, and whilst in prison, um, the president of the Republic of Zambia pardoned him on Labor Day. And because of that, he was released from prison. Uh, a few weeks later, we saw posts that he had beaten up his wife. Now, I'll read my, first, my Facebook post, and I just want to read some of the few comments and the backlash I've received from people. Look, I am a student at the moment, almost finishing my master's in law. So I, I focus on gender conflict and human rights. And one of the aspects we tackle, we look at, is sexual violence, domestic violence, anything to do with women. That's why I went for this course, because I've seen there's a problem somewhere. So we could help each other and empower the young girls, protect them from perpetrators. So let me read my post. My hashtag, by the way, is mute general canon. I will actually put it there as well so that you can, if you want to share, if you want to follow me on Facebook, you just find mute general canon and you'll find I'm the only person who posted about him. In Africa, there's this thing called loyalty, where people are loyal to somebody because they are friends. And you see, I commented on one of them. I told one of the guys, I told them that, you know, you cannot judge this person based on your relationship and friendship with this person. Because you've never been with this person. You don't know how he reacts when he's horny. Okay, this is my post. I say this. I'm a qualified social worker, by the way. I've said it in my first vlog. I, I, I did mention that I am qualified. I'm a social worker in the UK. So this is what my um, post says. I have worked with sex offenders in the UK, in my field, and I must say, General Kanene in Zambia is living a life of a celebrity. In Britain, Kanene will be excluded from Lusaka, which is the capital of Zambia. So let's just say Lusaka is like London and he would be excluded and maybe sent away to Birmingham and taken to a remote town after serving his conviction. Secondly, he would need to be put on the list called the sex offenders list 
his criminal check will show that he is barred from working with adults and vulnerable adults and children he would be monitored every 12 months by the police meaning even if he moves address the police must be aware or he returns back to prison the police need to know everything about him including bank details so anything to do with their life the police must be aware because of them having a sexual offense that's in the uk i'll stop there my post is long i'll link it down below so you can go and read it on my post i was basically just expressing to say why should this person who has been accused and was even convicted for sleeping with a minor be paraded on social media as a celebrity icon or as a reformed person as most people have been saying he's reformed let me read one of the comments that actually shocked me when i'll summarize it but most people were to, were, were coming up with issues like oh we are a christian nation we we forgive you are a christian and the fact that i'm a christian i'm a gospel singer i'm not allowed to talk about social issues meanwhile if i need food on my table christianity doesn't come in i have to work i have to put food on my table so let's not be hypocritical this issue is very sensitive and when i talked about general canon and not being the proper icon that we would want to see yes there's other celebrities out there that took part apparently 75 um, celebrities took part musicians took part in this event the workshop that they had and i i was asking myself questions because when 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 we are studying at uni when we have our lectures we have our seminars our conferences we have the un and different organizations the national human rights institution we have the northern ireland human rights commission turning up for these events and i'm just wonder i was just wondering to myself like what is the un saying about this and i knew the un would say something about it so the un now said such an outrageous release and appointment as an ambassador for the fight against gender-based violence not only traumatizes the victim exactly all over again but discourages other victims from reporting similar offenses exactly what i was thinking if this guy is being paraded all over as the ambassador of sexual violence or domestic violence or gender-based violence and meanwhile his victims can see him on tv can see him on posters what do you think other people will say i'm not reporting it's a waste of time look at what happened to that guy and this is why when trump says africa is trash don't complain because the system itself is corrupt why would you release this person from prison just after one year obviously the president did it out of goodwill via what people told him and then he further adds that the pardon and appointment undermined the strong message against sexual abuse of women and girls that was sent with the original sentence and trivialized the serious nature of these offenses exactly sexual abuse sexual violence is a very serious case don't take it lightly come to britain and somebody was on about how just because i live abroad and that's why i'm saying this excuse me forget about that mindset we come to the uk we go wherever we live abroad in order for us to acquire skills we learn more it's a first world country they are developed in so many ways so we look at what they are doing and we try to clone what they are doing and bring it to Africa. Why would I be doing human rights if I know I'm not going to use it in Africa? Why have I done, done social work if I know that I'll never use it in Africa? And somebody went on commenting and saying, oh, just because you are in the diaspora. Some, another person said, just because you live in, you've, when you come to Zambia, you just go to their cities. Who told you? 
Who told you that I've never been to the compounds? Who told you that I've never been to the ghetto? So even if the person lives in the ghetto, does that give them the right to live their lives aimlessly and sexually violate women? No. Whether you're in the first world, third world, second world, tenth world, sexual violence is sexual violence. And there's no argument about that. Special repertoire concluded by saying that rather Clifford Dimba has been placed in prominent in a prominent pos position and even portrayed as a role model to fight against to fight violence against women for what then it constitutes an utter disrespect for women and girls in Zambia who might rightly feel that their government is not protecting them it is a duty of our government to protect the women of Zambia. And that is why my post stated that if this is the case, that he's being paraded and everyone is excited about it, then the human rights institutions in Zambia are weak. Because what I know is that as long as the Zambian government has ratified the UN Convention under CEDO, which says that Zambia should obey whatever recommendations that CEDO makes under its convention CEDO has made, it means that Zambia that has ratified this convention should follow the guidelines and should not put people at risk by allowing a perpetrator to be out there. I don't care what anyone says. There's no way this person can have three allegations or four allegations and, and ten allegations. And that's why I told one person, I said, you've never seen this person when he's in action. Don't support or defend somebody you've never seen when they are horny. When they're in their horny state where they want to be with a woman. You can't defend them because you don't know how they act. So don't defend someone you don't know. So most people that were attacking me were musicians and uh, people that feel they are loyal to this person You can attack me all you want you can call me a Christian who doesn't forgive but Like I said on my Facebook post social values and Christian values are two different things and That is why we have so many things that are happening out there because we are Christians We shut up and guess what a woman is killed so many women die as a result of domestic domestic violence I also stated that I have worked with different women who have even suffered mental health as a result of trauma from sexual violence or domestic violence. So when I'm saying these things, when I'm arguing, I'm not arguing because I don't have anything to talk about. I argue based on what I have seen, based on what I have worked with. But due to confidentiality, I cannot disclose the cases. But all I can say is perpetrators, sexual offenders, the majority re-offend. Some of them, when you see them, it's not until you read what they've done, you'll be shocked. A perpetrator doesn't look like a perpetrator. They don't look ruggy. They don't look honey. They don't look like somebody who wants to rape a child today or tomorrow. They look very innocent. So in order for us to protect women in Zambia, we have to start by punishing somebody who has committed an offense that deprives the woman's rights and freedom. You slept with this girl against her will. She reported you, which is a courageous thing to do because those days, most of these women that would report sexual violence would be laughed at by the police. And that's, I'll link a video here and just listen to what the UN is also saying about sexual violence and in conflict as well. Yes, this person has saved his time. Yes, according to people in Zambia, he has reformed. So because he has reformed, he can now attend events that talk about women because you will learn something about women. A sex offender is a sex offender. I don't care whether he is reformed or he is not reformed. The fact remains that this person has a heavy allegation against them. By law, even when he is applying for a visa, that's what my post says, even if he's applying for a visa 
to come to the UK or to go to other countries like Canada, Australia, he needs to declare that he's been arrested and clear. Even if he's been cleared, he has to declare. Now tell me these big countries will allow a person with a sexual allegation to enter their country. No. I gave an example on my post. I said, I know somebody from Sierra Leone that was a British citizen that raped a woman in the UK. And because of that, he was given 16 years sentence in, in, in Belmarsh prison. And then after that, he was, give, he, he was going to be deported and his British citizenship revoked. This is a man who had sex with an adult. We don't know what happened, but the lady said it was rape. Now, this is somebody who is sleeping with a minor and you are there busy defending rubbish. I was not happy about this whole parading of this guy. There's so many people that can represent the I care about her organization. I didn't say nonsense to the organization, but I said the guy's participation is absolutely nonsense. Because what the guy needs is a form of rehab where he will get professional help. When he gets professional help, then he can come out and say, oh, he was like this, he was like that. But then you're there parading him with certificate and his t-shirt is so provocative. Just read what his t-shirt is saying. Tupac wa Zambia. He's a Tupac of Zambia. Meaning what? He's untouchable. So the UN went on by saying that this is an insult to the justice system for these women that are victims in this case. So... It brings me back to how in Zambia, everybody just wants to fight you. Most people want to fight you just because you live in the diaspora. You have nothing to say. You're just talking from the computer. What are you saying? When we work, where I have worked myself, I've worked so many places, worked with so many different people. The reason why we are still here is because of good records good standing with the law, good character. If you have a bad character, that's where you all will always see and hear that people have been deported. It's because of bad character. And sexual violence, domestic violence, these are crimes that are not taken lightly. So we have to stop this fighting against people who live in the diaspora, they think they know too much just because they're in the first world or just because they are talking from in zambia we call it Bazungu's land so um what our brother whoever introduced this guy to this organization that was having this workshop what he's doing is a good thing keep it up keep 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 the job keep it up it's a good job that you're doing we don't deny this guy having opportunities but don't parade him as an ambassador or parade him as an inspiration or a role model or as a reformed person because you are not in his heart. You don't know what he is up to for you to say he has reformed. And this issue of th you can throw the first stone at him if you've never seen and blah, blah, blah. Why do we always have to Christianize everything in Africa? You are sleeping hungry. You say it's the devil. You don't have a job. It's an attack. Hello, go and apply for a job. Are you telling me those people who do menial jobs are useless? I've said it time without number even on my Facebook page. I said I don't care whether I have a degree. As long as I have a job that will help me do what I need to do in my life, I don't care. I care less. After all, I'm paid per hour. After all, the money will come quick like that. So whether it's cleaning, whether it's washing dishes, whether it's looking after the elderly, whether it's l doing, as long as it's a legal job. But the mindset, this thing of always saying, if for example, people are rich, they are devil worshiper. If people are doing so well in their lives, oh, we don't know what they've touched. 
if you things are not going so well in your life, maybe it's my uncle. I've never heard white people say that. I've never ever heard a white person say, maybe it's because of my uncle that I'm suffering. I've never. All they know is that you need a job in order for you to survive. And that's why they can afford a house, a car, they, they afford their basic life needs and their mindset, they, according to the way they've been raised and shaped, majority of them don't look at being very rich. There's a competition of being so rich in Africa. Everybody wants to be rich. Everybody wants to be successful. So back to the topic, just because somebody is in the diaspora, they cannot conclude or comment on what's happening. Or just because I am a gospel minister, I can't conclude, I can't comment. Who am I? Who is she? Who does she think she is that she can comment on issues that are happening in Zambia when she's speaking on the other side of the world? I am Zambia by birth. I was born and raised in Zambia. And my mentality is Zambian. And Zambia is at heart. And wherever I go, I represent Zambia. That is why my character should portray how I was raised in Zambia. So General Kanen, his character of how he's behaved portrays of who he is. And this is the same person you want to, you want him to represent you as your ambassador or he's reformed, he's a Zambian, he's this, he's a musician. So my post also talked about um, Ara Kelly. And I did mention to say that just like what is happening to Ara Kelly, Ara Kelly's music has been um, put down from iTunes, Spotify, from many downloading sites. And uh, artists like Celine Dion have actually put down the music that they sang together from online streaming. And somebody made a, a, a silly comment like, oh, forget about Ara Kelly. They are not in the same category. Oh, Ara Kelly is different. Oh, Kanene is different. You can't compare the two of them because obviously Ara Kelly is in America and Kanene is in Zambia. But the offenses are similar, Abi. They are the same. It's both about sex. Why did I refer to Ara Kelly? I have been following Ara Kelly's case religiously and this guy in Zambia slept with a woman without her consent she was raped he's a musician R. Kelly is a musician so why not compare the two they are both musicians they are both in the entertainment industry meaning their character should be of good vibes it should be positive character not negative char character not characteristics that poses a danger to our communities so i have the right to compare general kanene to ara kelly because it's my right and in my opinion they fit in the same category because they are both men they are both musicians and obviously being musicians women easily trust them i mean they are celebrities so who knows even the other girl probably the same thing happened who knows maybe this lady trusted uh clifford dimba and she ended up falling for his tricks we don't know so in my comparison between ara kelly and uh, this guy is simply because they are both musicians. They are both in the entertainment industry. And they've both committed crimes that involve violations against women, which is what I stand for. I have to leave you with a reflection. What if what General Kanene did happen to a family member? Would you still defend him? What if anybody very close to you was raped? Would you defend the person that has been accused? My desire is to see the victims receive justice and also the victims being supported through these challenging and traumatic times. How others deal with trauma 
may not be a case for another person or the other person. And that's how we need to understand this issue. It's not about me. It's about the victims. Those who've been violated. Those whose human rights have been violated. Those are the people I'm standing for. This is not a case of we are friends. We need to stand by each other. It's about doing the right thing. What the law says. What does international law say with this regard? I focus on international law and human rights. So with General Kanene, his freedom is questionable. His character has been questioned several times. For those of you that want to support him, it's up to you. I also read an article that the Oxfam has distanced themselves from the association of this guy. On the, of that event that they had. Oxfam is a reputable organization. Obviously, after reading articles and everything that's there, out there about this person, why would they even want to be affiliated with such a person? And that's why I told some of these musicians to say, you are the right people to represent your organ these organizations because you're in good standing with the law, but not somebody who's had allegations. Whether the allegations are true or not, one, two, three, four times can never be lies. Are you telling me everybody's just accusing the same person over the same thing? And you obviously think he is just not liked. That's why they're accusing him? No. There must be something. There's nothing hidden under the sun. Mute General Cannon is my campaign. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's Lila Mutat, Gilmore Pazette.